In this video, we're gonna cover off six more or less structural building tips that we hope will be useful when you build a little bit more creative or advanced builds in Conan Exiles. None of the tips requires any mods, and while you might know some of them, I really hope that you'll also discover some that will inspire you. Let's talk about side-by-side -side foundations. Let's say you want to build another building fairly close to your existing building, but you don't want to attach it to it. A typical issue is that if you come too close with your new foundation piece, it might snap on. Let's see how close we can build without snapping on. As you can see, not very close. So we have a couple of options here. If we build as close as we can without snapping, you can then use that as a base to build further in. Simple, but maybe a bit fiddly. The easiest but least flexible option would be to build a foundation next to your initial building and then continue with another foundation and then delete the foundation in between. That creates a perfectly aligned building, but it maybe is too perfect and doesn't also allow for any height differences. A third option would be to use a pillar next to your initial foundation. Doing this, you can build a new foundation quite close without actually snapping onto the first building's foundation. You can also use this trick to alter the height or alignment of the second building while still building quite close to your initial building, as you can see here. Next up are round bases. We all know how easy it can be to build boxy houses or simply fall into the habit of building something that is square or rectangular in layout. While Conan Exiles doesn't offer any round building pieces, there are ways that we can get around that. The easiest way to build round bases in Conan Exiles is to start off with a set of veg foundations. To better highlight the patterns, we have chosen to use two building sets for squares and wedges. We can further extend our base by using additional square or wedge pieces. As you can see in our example here, there's different ways of combining them, but generally you do square pieces on the edges of wedges or wedges on the edges of any square pieces to create these patterns. We can also easily build more an oval foundation by building a pattern like this. For instance, taking our initial pattern but not completing it with all the wedges could result in something like this. Or by combining multiple round foundations, you can turn your base into something quite elaborate. Using this exact blueprint, we played around a little bit, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of room for creativity. Our next tip is about bridging longer gaps without the need for pillars for stability. We use this trick in our Evoc Village build, which you can see in the background, and we received quite a few questions on how to do this. For this Evoc Village, we use pieces from the Derkero DLC, so you're seeing treehouse foundations and as well various bridge pieces. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using base game pieces, so that this can all be done without DLC. So here we are in the jungle and we're gonna try to bridge the gap between these two trees. As with any little bit thicker, larger tree, you are able to place uh, foundation pieces in them so that they can actually then connect and you can build further. Taking aim at the other tree, we can place our first foundation. 
and then we'll use ceiling pieces to start bridging this gap and we'll do one two three and four at this point our stability as we can see with the repair hammer means we go from 100 to 80 to 60 to 40 and 20 and the next piece will have no stability thereby we cannot place it so how can we get across well we'll build some temporary pillars going down from the last ceiling all the way down now that we have done that we will have a hundred percent stability on this piece now be aware there is a bug which sometimes means you cannot continue to build on this piece even if it has a hundred uh, stability if that happens usually just destroying it and building it again will fix the issue so that you can build further this allows us to build another four ceilings and luckily we are just across and we're able to place another last foundation with this foundation in place we can go back and delete our pillars and as you can see we now have actually stability across a full eight length uh, going from the right to left you can see the stability goes down to 20 then it starts at 20 and goes up to 100 on the left side so this is how you bridge longer gaps. Tip number four, how to build different level foundations or steps with little height difference if you like. Starting quite low with a foundation, you build a fence on the edge pointing outwards. By doing this, we are allowed to raise the foundation slightly higher and we can continue to repeat this to get even higher up. At one point we will not be able to place a foundation because we no longer have ground support. To overcome this challenge we can build a temporary foundation around the existing structure, thereby allowing us to raise it one higher and then we can use this temporary platform and actually raise that higher making it possible to build further steps. Be warned that this trick might not work with all building materials. Another tip is that it's possible to build it down as well uh, by using fence foundations like we do here, uh, lowering them one extra step, then building a foundation to go up, we get stepping stones going down. In comparison with the first method, using fence foundations allows you to build steps that are quite low in height. Unfortunately, with the first method, characters will have to jump to get up. While using fence foundations allows the character to run up and down smoothly. Next, a useful tip that will allow you to snap pillars on the side of or in between foundations. So we built the beginnings of a small, let's call it a bathhouse here, for demonstration purposes only. Now if you would like to frame the pool with pillars, we usually only have two options. We could build, as you see, close to the edge of the water, and then place the bigger placeables in the space behind the pillars. Or we could place the pillars closer to the wall and build the placeables in front. Depending on how many pillars you place, it can easily feel like they're in the way. Is there another solution? Well, if we could place the pillars between the foundations, that would have been pretty cool. And yes, we can. If you plan ahead, you are able to do this by basically now, just to show you, we remove the foundations on the outer side, and then we build stairs going up. And by building these stairs, you're actually able to place the pillars on the edge where the stairs connect to. Now, with the pillars in place, we can replace our foundations, uh, put our wall in place, and voila! Here we have a much better solution for our space. So just to repeat this, if you build any foundation and you build a stair on the side, we are able to place a pillar where the stair comes up. So just to show you here, we can do this on all the sides actually at the same time. We should be able to place four pillars and as well one in the middle. 
This is a great trick for balconies, terraces, all depending on what you have in mind. Our last trick today is about creating a little bit more creative roof solutions. Roof pieces in Conan Exiles can easily be a source of frustration and can be quite boring as they don't overlap the roof edges and can make houses look boxy. This is an example of a house which is pretty basic and nothing to write home about. And here we are trying to make it a little bit more elaborate. We have used some awning pieces, which is a good tip as to extend your terrace and make the house look a little bit more natural. And keep in mind that roof pieces do not necessarily need to go on the roof. You can easily place them on the wall like we've done here to create a sort of porch or terrace. But now on to a little bit more advanced technique to create overlapping roof edges. This trick involves creating an offset that allows us to place roof pieces where they normally would not go. One way to achieve this is to build a gateway. By centering it, we can take a ceiling piece from the very top and another one going out from that and then build down with three pillars and a ceiling in the very end. And this ceiling is now offset from the rest of the foundations, which allows us to build a roof piece overlapping halfway out and halfway in. We could carry on using this method, but let's first see an alternative to the gateway. This involves using a staircase building a pillar and then a ceiling on top, then a second staircase 90 degrees to the first and a pillar and a ceiling on top. Well, you don't need a ceiling on top. We could build the pillars now straight down to the ground, align it with the roof and then put a ceiling on top while extending that ceiling to build around like we show here. And this again allows an offset so that we can build the roof pieces on the side as well as the corner in this case. Now we could either continue to build around the outer part or as I will show you, we can simply build on the inside, just filling up with ceilings and we can then complete the roof fully around. The corners still need a snapping point, so you'll still have to build ceiling on the outside to get full support and be able to snap those in place. Even leaving it like this, it could almost be like an inner courtyard if you would have built and extended it like that. This building trick is often used to, for instance, create a Japanese pagoda. In that case, we will have to build two pillars on an outside foundation and then come up like this with a ceiling because we're not going to be able to snap any walls without a snap point on top like this. Once you've done this around the full building, you increase the height with one, for instance, and then you simply repeat the full first process and as well the next second step to get up to a third level and then you can carry on to build a tall Japanese pagoda. This all might feel and look quite complicated, but you can make some quite interesting buildings using this building trick. Now, as we are not building a pagoda today, we're gonna remove these walls to close the roof up to create a homely little house. Using awning pieces, we are creating a flatter roof And to create support for the four last pieces, we need to create walls within the awnings and thereby be able to close everything up. And there we go. 
We hope we could inspire you with our building tips. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for updates.